The 2014 Accident Advice Solicitors Promenade Stages Rally is once again held on the closed roads around the King's Parade in New Brighton. Uniquely bringing rallying to the public, the event takes place just a short ferry ride away from the city of Liverpool. Now a tradition, the rally kicks off on the Friday evening with a couple of stages being run into the night, offering the chance for the spectators to see a different side to the sport. The action got underway at 7pm, with crews running in reverse order. Pete Walton and Nigel Perkins started first on the road in their Ford Fiesta, whetting the crowd's appetite for the higher seeded cars to come as darkness falls. The promenade stage always attracts an amazing and diverse lineup of vehicles, from the powerful four-wheel drive machinery that once graced the world stage to the more sedate but just as well-driven one-litre class, dominated by the Nissan Micra, with a whole host of incredible machines in between, like Andy Phipps' fire-breathing Ford Anglia 4x4. As the two stages came to an end, it was clear to see the rally couldn't be won in the dark, but you could certainly lose it. The curbs are the main cause for concern around the promenade, with every stage lined by them, waiting to catch out those who don't offer them enough respect. And to add to the challenge, a maze of roundabouts all set up to make the driver think. It won't be smooth sailing for all the crews on Friday as retirements start coming straight from the off. Ian Martin and Keith Robertson were one of many crews to encounter problems, struggling here on stage two, with the car intermittently cutting out mid-stage. The pair would eventually get the car going again, but lose over two minutes during the two night stages. Julian Jones and Mike Hermits were even more unlucky when the differential gave up on their Mark II after just five yards of the first stage. Marshall's dashing to move the stricken escort from the middle of the stage. Chris Pennington's evening was about to take a turn for the worst as the Evo driver loses control of the car and parks it on a metal railing. The damage is evident when the car is recovered back to service and with the co-driver's side missing the front corner, it was clear their event was over. And just to show it can happen to the best, last year's winner Alan Oldfield, co-driven by Steve McNulty, clips a curb in the new Millington engine Proton and breaks a wheel. The crew would manage to get the car fixed, but would use the remainder of the event as a test session, as they were competing again on the Sunday. So the end of the two Friday evening stages and the top five positions look like this. Paul Evans and Lowell Powell are in the top spot after Simon Bowen blew the head gasket on stage two, having set a blistering time on the first one. Evans, who is still settling into the ex-Matthew Robinson Mark II Escort, had a pre-event test day to set up the suspension on the car, which proved to be a worthwhile activity. Second overnight was held by the father and son team of Wesley and Ryan Simpson, the crew pushing hard and keeping the gap to Evans to just one second going into Saturday's stages. Third overall goes to another escort crew, this time piloted by Will Owen and Rob Hopewell. The pair setting a strong pace a further second back and hoping to improve on their 15th overall finish last year. Fourth overall and first of the non-escorts belongs to Mark Holmes and Craig Simkis in their stunning Metro 6R4. A favourite with the fans, and still only three seconds off the lead, the crew will be pushing hard over the 10 daylight stages tomorrow to try and rein in the two-wheel drive competition. Just behind Mark and Craig are Damien Cole and Susan Wright in their Mark II Escort. The crew complete the evening's loop and drop nearly two seconds of stage to the leaders. But with plenty of mileage tomorrow, it's too close to call at the top. On to day two then, and with the skies overcast and the threat of rain in the air, Mark Holmes and Craig Simkis put the four-wheel drive Metro through its paces, setting two fastest times as they climb the leaderboard from fourth to first over the morning's loop, the pair managing to open up a three-second lead over Evans. The speed was still there for the local crew though, and they knew starting day two first on the road would be a daunting prospect with such a high quality field of cars chasing them down. Still, a string of consistently quick times was enough to keep the rest of the field at bay for now.
Willow in, and Rob Hopewell continued to hold on to third place overall, flicking the escort around the traffic islands and keeping the wheels away from those curbs, importantly. Six seconds were lost to the leaders over stages three and four, but a joint equal time with the Metro driver on stage five ensured the pressure was still being applied. Wesley and Ryan Simpson continued to push hard in their escort too, losing only a handful of seconds over the morning's tests to the guys in front. Still, an improvement over their seeding of 21 places shows how hard the crew were trying. With the crew running on such a tight budget, tyres were beginning to become a factor as they only had a limited supply with them for the rally. Unfortunately for Damien Cole and Susan Wright, stage four would be the last we'd see of the pair as the car grinds to a halt halfway through the fifth stage with prop shaft failure. This promotes Jack Derbyshire and Matthew Kendall into fifth place. This event is only the second time Jack has driven the car, but the unusual mix of Ford Focus body shell and Subaru in Pretzer running gear proves a force to be reckoned with. And as the crew begin to gain some seat time, the stage times improve too. A crew to watch out for then as the event unfolds, no doubt. Another crew punching above their weight, if you like, as Steve Quigley and Steve Lewis in the little Renault Clio 172 Cup. Leading Class 3 and 6th overall after five stages, the front-wheel drive car is showing it's more than capable of keeping up with the rear-wheel drive and four-wheel drive competition. Seventh place overall at this stage is the Darien of Nigel Gibbard and Simon Rogers. Five seconds the time difference to the Clio drivers in front after five stages, four of which were taken out of them in stage four. But with Darien's being proven winners on the promenade, it will be down to the driver and co-driver to push that car to the limit. Sean Riley and Joe Ford were having a good run in their Mark II Escort. Another crew who enjoy throwing the car around between the curbs. A consistent pace being shown by the Wallasey Motor Club members on their home patch, rewarding them with a solid eighth place as the event moves toward the midway point. Ninth overall is held by Mark Roberts and Garrett Twist in their immaculate Ford Escort World Rally car. They settle in well now after a slow start from the first stage. And rounding out the top ten is another local crew, this time that's of Kevin Williams and Andy George. The crew are well accustomed to the King's Parade as they've been competing on the prom stages for many years now. 2014 is looking to be their best yet if they can keep this pace up. So looking at the various classes now and leading the way in class one is Geraint Mays and Ashley Trimble in the Nova, climbing up to 28th overall after five stages. Alistair and David Oram hold second spot in the class again in the Vauxhall Nova. The Warrington crew, 25 seconds off their fellow Nova drivers. Third in Class 1 was Alwyn Fraser and Richie Hughes in the little Citroen C2. A further 15 seconds off the class lead, but trying hard nonetheless. Class 2 is for cars with engine sizes between 1.4 litre and 1.6 litre. Matthew Roberts and Sarah Hughes hold a 25 second lead in their Citroen Saxo after five stages. Second in the class is local driver Danny Davies in his Vauxhall Corsa. He and co-driver Liam McCallion are just managing to fend off the pressure put on them by the third place crew David Burns and Steve Hallmark in their newer Corsa. The two cars separated by just one second after five stages. Class three is being led by Steve Quigley and Steve Lewis in the Clio 172 Cup. The Lancashire men increasing the pace as the day unfolds. Second in class behind the Clio is Nigel Gibbard. Darian T90 driver is a long way from his home in Pembrokeshire this weekend, but is making his trip worth the while. And just behind Nigel is third place in class, Kevin Williams. He's been a faultless run so far for the escort driver, who's looking to beat his highest place on the event. In class four for vehicles over two litre, Mark Holmes is the current leader of both his class and event being pushed all the way by both Paul Evans and Wesley Simpson. Paul currently lies in second position in the class, a position that his sponsors, accident advice solicitors, will enjoy, no doubt.
And rounding out the top three in class four is Wesley Simpson and Ryan Simpson. The top three positions covering less than five seconds. So at the end of five stages, the top of the results look like this. So as we move into the afternoon stages, the battle for the top spot intensifies. The lead of the event changes hands as the crews complete the next four stages. Paul Evans and Lowell Powell inherit the lead from Mark Holmes and Craig Simkis after the Metro crew take a stage maximum on stage six. Another crew who benefit from the loss of the 6R4 from the leaderboard are Wesley and Ryan Simpson. The crew continuing to push on even though the budget for new tyres was becoming more of an issue. Jack Derbyshire and co-driver Matthew Kendall keep pushing hard to find themselves in the final podium position with just four stages remaining. First fastest on stage six and second fastest on both seven and eight, showing the competition just how well the crew are settling into that car. Nigel Gibbard and Simon Rogers also move up the leaderboard. The South Wales crew show some great stage times as the event progresses, including a third fastest on stage six to help their chances of a podium position come the end of the rally. No dramas to report from Steve Quigley and Steve Lewis in the Clio, although they couldn't do anything about that hard charging Darien and had to concede the class lead, a position they wouldn't let go without a fight though. Sixth overall and two position gained for local team Sean Riley and Joe Ford. Local knowledge proving key as the crew worked their way up the leaderboard. Stage times were improving too with a string of top 10 times over the last few stages. Just behind Sean and Joe would be Keith Douthwaite and Colin Treby in their class four escort. The crew recovering well from a slow stage time on stage four and breaking into the top 10 for the first time on the rally. Another crew making an appearance in the top 10 for the first time was Graham Bell and Russ Radford in the escort. The crew travelling across to the event from Yorkshire and settling into a good rhythm as the day unfolds. Just a slow time on stage three, dropping the crew almost 10 seconds over their rivals. Ninth place and moving in the right direction of the leaderboard are Kevin Williams and Andy George. A steady performance with no drama was working well for the pair. With years of experience around these stages, the crew know only too well that you can rip a wheel off by touching the kerb. So the neat and tidy approach was the order of the day. And rounding out the top 10 after eight stages was Sean Cassidy in the Fiesta 4x4, co-driven by Grant Williams. The crew struggled in the dark on Friday evening, but have seen the light today and have been making good progress back up the leaderboard, consistently setting top 10 stage times now. So another quick look at the classes now and leading class F for vehicles up to one litre is Phil and Katie Sargent in the Melvin Evans run Nissan Micra. They've been having a good solid run as the others in the class faulted, but sadly this was the last time we'd see the crew having to retire the car just before the end of the rally. This means of the three starters in the class, no one has managed to get to the end of the event. Class 1 stays the same with Geraint Mays and Ashley Trimble leading the class in that little orange Nova. Continuing to show outstanding pace and now currently sitting in 23rd overall. Not bad for a 1.4 litre car. Chasing hard was still Alistair and David Oram in their similar machine. The crew now move up the leaderboard to 28th overall with just four stages to go. Alwyn Fraser and Richie Hughes still hold on to third place in the class in their Citroen C2 crew running in 40th on the leaderboard. And class two was still being led by the hard charging Citroen Saxo of Matthew Roberts and Sarah Hughes. The crew have shown brilliant pace and sit just outside the overall top 10 in 11. A change for second in class now with David Burns and Steve Hallmark moving ahead of their fellow Corsa driver. The Lancashire crew holding on to 19th overall after eight stages. Danny Davies and Liam McCallion were the crew to lose out to Burns. A slip down to third in class and 21st overall for the pair. Class three was now being led by Nigel Gibbard, setting some great stage times as the day unfolds. The South Wales driver overhauls the Clio of Steve Quigley and begins to open up a lead over his rivals. The Clio driver slips down to second in class but holds a very impressive fifth overall behind Gibbard in fourth. 
third in class three and 12th overall for Kevin Williams and Andy George. Still pressing on in their Ford Escort Mark II. Losing time to the crews in front, but still holding on to that class podium. And into class four, Paul Evans now leads the event and with it the class. A sensible and mature drive over the afternoon stages, cementing his position at the top of the standings. Second in class though belongs to the Simpsons, Wesley and Ryan in their Escort Mark II. The crew pressing on hard, but losing ground to Evans over this loop of stages. And rounding out the top three in class is Jack Derbyshire and Matthew Kendall. The crew really getting to grips with the new car and reeling in Simpson in front. So let's have a quick look at the overall standings after eight stages. On to the final stages then and a look at the class and overall results. And finishing third in the class two battle this weekend were Alwyn Fraser and Richie Hughes. Alistair and David Oram have a good run to end the event second in the class in that Vauxhall Nova. And taking the class two win away with them this weekend were Scott Mays and Carrie Bates. The pair taking victory in that class by exactly a minute. In class three, it will be the final step on the podium for Danny Davies and Liam McCallion, the course of pair in an event long battle in that class. Sadly though, they lose out to second place David Burns and Steve Hallmark. The newer course are having the edge this weekend on the stages to take the runner up spot. But taking the class win this weekend were Matthew Roberts and Sarah Hughes. The pair winning by almost a minute and a half at the end of the rally. In the class four battle, there will be no further advance for Kevin Williams and Andrew George. They finish just outside the top 10 with their third in class finish. Steve Quigley and Steve Lewis result would see them in the top 10, which we will take a look at in a minute. But for now, it will be the class and they take second in class four this weekend. And coming out on top of that class after some good stage times this weekend were Nigel Gibbard and Simon Rogers, taking the Class 4 trophy along with their good overall results. On to the top 10 then, and it would be Class 3 winners Matthew Roberts and Sarah Hughes that end the day rounding out the top of the results in 10. Brandon Smith and Terry Martin have a good run to finish in 9th. Sadly, the competitive class means that 7th in Class 5 is all they can manage. Graham Bell and Russ Radford enjoy an 8th place finish here in New Brighton, a good run in the Escort. Another one to add to the many gracing the top 10 this weekend. Including that of the Escort of Sean Riley and Joe Ford. They have a good clean finish to end the event in 7th overall and 5th in the class. Keith Douthwaite and Colin Treby end the event in sixth. Their overall time just 59 seconds off the lead. Great competition for the top to be all separated by less than a minute. Steve Quigley and Steve Lewis break up the escorts in fifth place with the Clio. The pair of course taking second in the class, but do finish as the highest front wheel drive car. Class 4 winners Nigel Gibbard and Simon Rogers end the day just outside the podium places in 4th overall. A little way off the pace of 3rd, but good going nonetheless. So on to those podium finishes then, and it will be 3rd for Wesley and Ryan Simpson. The escort pair unable to do anything more 
and missing out on a place by just six seconds is so frustrating at the end of two days of competition. And coming out on top of that battle would be Jack Derbyshire and Matthew Kendall. The Fokaru pair managing to take the runner-up place this weekend just 10 seconds off the eventual winners. So that means that it's an ideal finish for Paul Evans and Lowell Powell. The local crew finishing on top and giving the sponsors even more to smile about this weekend. So at the end of the rally, the results looked like this. Well done on the win today, Paul. Yeah, we had a, we had a fantastic rally. Um, it's our first win ever, so really chuffed to bits. There's um, quite a lot of pressure on us throughout the day and um, everyone's giving me advice to just keep going, keep neat and tidy and that's what we've done and you know, it's brilliant, Lowell's done a great job and it's, we've had a great rally. Even after we're class pop, 120.